Skeptics often reject the Christian faith because they view the Old Testament as historically unreliable. Dr. Kevin Birdwell, you are both a Christian and a climatologist. Do you think climatology gives insight into biblical events in the Old Testament? I absolutely do. In fact, I think you can use uh, these types of uh, data to help support or even help you refine you know, when certain things may have happened. And in this case, I want to talk about the Dead Sea rain gauge. All right, let's talk about, that's a term many people have not heard of, I'm sure I haven't. What is this Dead Sea rain gauge? Tell us what it is. Well, if you're familiar with the geography of the Middle East, you know, you have the Dead Sea there and it basically drains an area that covers uh, Eastern Israel, or rather, uh, yes, Eastern Israel, Western Jordan, uh, some of uh, Syria, uh, today and but the, the the really key thing about it is that it doesn't have an outlet to the sea so all the water that comes into the Dead Sea essentially originates from precipitation and all the water that leaves the Dead Sea uh, evaporates so there's no water that's running out to the ocean so uh, what that means is you can basically use it as a long-term rain gauge if you know what the, the levels of the water in the Dead Sea were in the past and one way that that's been done is through uh, taking radiocarbon dates of various uh, shoreline and beach sediments from the sides of, of where the Dead Sea has been. And is then, that because it's, it's low there? Is that a way to... It's very low today yeah. compared okay. to what it has been mm -hmm. in the past. And some of that's because, you know, uh, for the last maybe 100 years, it's been, you know, a lot of the water's been diverted. So we couldn't really use this principle, say, for the last hundred years, but we could use it for periods before that. So that's what has been done in some of these scientific papers. Um, so specifically here, I'm looking at the last, say, four or 5,000 years, and the time scale accuracy on this is about decadal. So you can't, uh, in other words, you can't say that it rained on, you know, on, the, on January 21st, uh, 2000 BC, but you can get kind of a 10 year to 20 year estimate of was it dry or was it wet during that period. And one of the things that's very notable about the, this data is that around 2200 BC, there was an incredible drought, uh, basically a 300 year drought, uh, more, you know, that persisted more or less for that long. And this encompasses the time period when Abraham was born. Now there's, there's various estimates of, of his date of birth, but one of the good estimates seems to be about 1952 BC, which would be toward the latter portions of this drought. Well, what's significant about that is <clears throat> we know that Abraham lived in southern Mesopotamia, and this was an area that originally was occupied by the Akkadian Empire. The Akkadian Empire suffered dramatically from this drought. And basically, uh, it, it probably was a major contributing factor to its fall. Now, there were some other empires that popped up in the meantime, but I think the important point here is that it may have been a rather tumultuous, uh, tumultuous time from a um, climatological perspective. Uh, because it had a negative effect on agriculture, which was the main basis of the society. And so uh, it's very possible, we, I mean, we don't know for certain, but it's very possible that when Abraham's father, Terah, decided to move the family northward, that they actually did so because they were uh, wanting, you know, better, greener pasture, literally. So if you move to northern Mesopotamia, then that means you have a better chance of experience wintertime rain, sort of like you do here in, sometimes in Southern California when the, when the cold fronts and so on move further south. Well, that's the same effect there in northern Mesopotamia. So there may have been a climate basis for why they moved uh, from Southern Mesopotamia to Northern Mesopotamia. 